Hello, my name is Cody Anderson, and this is my demo, my fixed demo 11B, where I want to show you how this very basic microprocessor works. So this file was sent to us by the instructor, and uh, we'll dive into the, the details in a little bit. But the overall idea is that we've got memory down here, and we've got our processor up here. And we've got this data bus, which connects all of it. So in order to process any uh, numbers through my computer, this is the, uh, the general approach that we take. We access the information from memory. We send it down the data bus into the processor. We perform whatever process we want, and then we take the results and pass them back down the data bus into the memory location of my choice. And then we can do it all again. So I want to demonstrate multiplying 10 times 7. So first on the inputs, I'm going to plug in 10. Hex A is decimal 10, and then also 7. I need to read that information from uh, these read-only memory devices and pass them into my processor. So first let's make sure my accumulator output is low. See that right now no values are being passed onto the data bus. But when we flip over to read mode and I select ROM 0, the value of ROM 0 which is A should appear there on the data bus. And that's good news. So now I want to send that value of A into temporary memory in my processor, and that's this little register here. First, I need to route it up in that direction, and this little switch does that for me. I can see those bit values change, but it hasn't been stored in the register yet. First, I need to make sure that that register is enabled, which it already is, and then I clock it in, and sure enough, we see that the A is now stored in that temporary memory on the front end of my calculator, which is the ALU. I'll talk about that in a bit. But now I need to get that other value of 7. So 7 is located at ROM 1, so I choose that address. I check it out and make sure, yeah, okay, the 7 is on the data bus. I do not want the 7 to over, overwrite the A that's in the register, so let's route it in the other direction. So now we can see a 7 being routed up here, and we see a value of 10 being routed down there. Now we get to the ALU, which is short for Arithmetic Logic Unit, and mine is super basic. It can only do these four, in reality three, arithmetic operations, either multiply those two four-bit numbers, add them together, or subtract B minus A. So for example, if I choose to subtract, we are doing 10 minus 7, which gives me 3. If I do add, we do 10 plus 7, which would be 17, but I only get a four-bit output. So 16 gets carried over uh, from that 17, and we're left with just a 1. If I multiply these together, well, oh, I need 8 bits to represent uh, the multiplication of two 4-bit numbers. And so I actually have to split this apart into the least significant 4 bits or the most significant 4 bits. So let's see, 10 times 7 is 70 in decimal, which would be 4 times 16 plus 6 in hex. So that's good news. Um, I, it takes two views to see it, but I see hex 4, 6, which actually is the result that I want. But now uh, I just want to show you how to store any of these results, really. Uh, let's just stick with multiplication, least significant 4. How to store that number back into memory. First, I need to store it within my accumulator. Right now we see the accumulator is output in a 0. I need to make sure that that register is active, which it is with that switch. And let's go ahead and flip that clock one more time. And we see that the 6 has now worked its way through that register. 
Okay, now the register is waiting to pour out onto the data bus. If I do that, I get an X. The trouble is that a read mode is also on. So we are currently getting information both from ROM1 down here and the accumulator, which is bad news, right? Only one value can be on the data bus at one time. So I shut off read mode and sure enough that six now has access to the data bus and is being sent all the way down to all of my devices like you see here. Let's go ahead and clock that six into RAM two. So I need to select device two. I need to be in write mode. Now everything's primed, just waiting for that clock pulse. And sure enough, we see that the six has now been clocked in. And that's it for my demonstration of how this super basic microprocessor works.